Well, happy, happy uh, Canada Day weekend, everybody. There you go. Who's proud to be a Canadian this morning? Yes. And if you say it too loudly, then you have to apologize, right? Just kidding. I, uh, Canada Day weekend, our, there's a few of our neighbors. When we moved in a couple years ago, a few of our neighbors, when we drove up to move our stuff in, we moved on July 1st. And when we drove up, there were all these people out on the street. And I thought it was a, they were just welping, welcoming us to the neighborhood. But what it was is they meet out on the street every July 1st and cheers and, and say happy Canada Day. So we thought, they invited us out. There's a few elderly couples that still do it. They've been doing it for 40 years. And so they invited us out. And so we went out and somehow they found out that that I sing, or I'm a musician, and so they asked me to lead them in O Canada, and I really wish I had video of it, because it was me and a couple elderly people singing O Canada out in the middle of an empty street, and it was awesome, but uh, yeah, and I do want to say to all those watching on the live stream, everybody that didn't make it this morning, that are maybe huddled around a campfire, or... My personal favorite, went to sleep in a freezing tent and woke up sweating. Welcome to church this morning. If you're watching this after the fact, welcome to church. Um, I I don't want to take up too much time with the message this morning because we're going to do communion. And if you didn't get a wafer, you can grab one at the back. Um, But I do want to talk about something this morning. The word communication. Now, when you hear the word communication, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Talking? Okay, what else? Does anybody else have anything? Marriage? Yes. Anything else? What's that? Oh, it's key. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, communication is something that it means a different thing to each one of us. So it's kind of hard to pin this word down into one thing. But for some people, communication uh, can mean standing up on a platform, right? We take, you can take hundreds of classes to learn the art of communication, how to speak, how to convey an idea really well. Or some of us, it might have been a class that we took at work so that we could learn to communicate with our clients better. Or for some of us, it can mean marriage. Communication is such a key part of marriage, and that's the first thing that I think of when I think of communication is, is marriage. Communication is a massively cl- complex part of our lives. There isn't a part of our lives that, that doesn't get touched by communication, right? Just think of all the c- miscommunications that we have in our lives all the time, right? We can miscommunicate almost daily, or maybe that's just me. And, and think of all the things that we have going for us, and still we miscommunicate, right? We all speak the same language, for the most part. We all live in the same culture, right? And yet, we miscommunicate all the time. When I was younger, I had the chance to travel to Japan for a couple of weeks and, and visit a totally different culture. And um, it was, I remember the first night we landed... There's a whole bunch of us. We tried to find a place to eat, and we went to this restaurant, and uh, we thought you'd just walk in, and you'd say, like, hey, I want a bowl of noodles, and they'd bring you a bowl of noodles, right? But I remember how frustrating it was for both our, like, really hungry group of people that had traveled all day, and this hostess that's trying to serve us something, and we can't communicate what we want to eat. We ended up, I think we just ended up pointing to something on another table, and they just brought us what was on the other table, right? Have you guys ever found yourself in a place where it was really, really hard to communicate? Can you communicate that to me right now? Yes or no? Sometimes I feel like, okay, we live in Canada, and we speak the same language, we live in the same culture, but still... We have this inability a lot of times to communicate. And a lot of times it's our inability to communicate that lands us in a position that should have been avoidable, right? So I just want to talk about that this morning. Talk about the word communication in the context of each of our faith, our everyday life, and in the context 
of this community, this community of believers this morning. There's two types of communication, two main types of communication in the heart and in the life of every Christian, and that's first Communication between all of us, right, between humanity, between me and you, between you and your brother and sister. And the second is communication between us and our creator, between us and God. So I want to tackle the first one this morning. First, I don't think we'll get to the second one, but we can tackle the first one. So many times when I think about communication, the first thing I think about is, is verbal communication right, what you say, the words that you say, but did you know that 70 to 90 percent of communication is nonverbal? Did you guys know that? 70 to 90 percent of all communication is nonverbal, so that means your, your body language, that means your vocal tone, that means the, the faces you make, right, and I'll give you an example of this, so in my marriage, a lot of times between me and Danae, there'll be something that, not a lot of times, but usually it's, it's my bad, but I'll, I'll get frustrated by something and the first thing I do is I try to just hide it, right? Because a lot of times it's usually a petty thing or something stupid, so I'm embarrassed that this frustrates me, so I usually try to hide it and just push it down. And she'll ask me, you know, hey, what's wrong? Nothing, I'm fine. The words I say are that everything is fine, but a lot of times what I'm communicating is that things aren't fine, right? And this ends up creating more of a problem until finally I just tell her what's going on. Usually it's not that big of a deal, and she'll say something like, well, why didn't you just say that in the first place? Anybody else been there in their marriage? Yeah? Now, usually the problem isn't the first frustration. The problem is that our words and our actions are conflicting, right? Our words and our actions don't say the same thing. A lot of times we can do this as followers of Jesus as well, right? The Christian language is something that we can all learn pretty easy. You learn how to talk it. You learn how to say the right things. But a lot of times the way that, that we speak and the way that we're acting can be different. As a family of Christ in this room this morning, I think it's important that we learn how to communicate in a way that that edifies the body of Christ, right? Now, it might be news to you this morning, but there will be a time, if you stay in this church long enough, if you stay in this community long enough, if you engage in this community, there will be a time where you will have conflict with your brother or sister, It's going to happen. And if you don't have it with somebody else, you're going to have it with me or you're going to have it with Pastor Lee. And I just want to talk about a few things, a few ways to handle conflict, to communicate effectively throughout conflict so that we begin to create a culture where there is healthy communication. Okay, this is going to be a really practical message this morning. But before we go any further, I want to let you guys know that all these things I speak on are going to be things that I am working on as well, things that I have failed in many times and will probably fail in again. But if we waited until everybody mastered something in order to teach it, then we'd have nobody to teach, right? So I want to talk about this this morning, and I want you to know that I'm not standing up here in a place of judgment, but I'm standing up here looking at this with everybody else. So, the first thing I want to talk about this morning, the first point I want to make in communication between us as brothers and sisters is be honest. Be honest. Don't be a harbor for bitterness or resentment. We've already addressed this a little bit, but too many times we we brush things under the rug, right? We're afraid of conflict, so then we just think the Christian thing to do is we just forgive and that's it. I'm not going to talk to them about it. I'm not going to approach them about it. I'm just going to forgive, right? Okay. But many times the things, the conflict that we have doesn't just go away, right? We sit on this offense or this frustration until we no longer want to even associate with that person. We don't even want to be part 
of that person's life, right? Anger turns into sin when we harbor it in our hearts and we refuse to acknowledge the offense. It turns into sin, not when there's the original offense, but when we harbor it in our hearts and we refuse to acknowledge it. I've been guilty of this many times. So let's look in Ephesians 4.25. It says, So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are part of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you have a problem with somebody... We need to first take it to God and see where we're at fault. And once we've done that, then we take it to the person, right? You take it to the person. You come to them with humility and love, desiring to be reconciled to that person. Remembering that communication is not just speaking. You don't just go so that you can be right, but you go so that you can also listen and find out the other side of the story. And I'll tell you from experience as well that many times the person you have the problem with, has no idea, you feel that way. That one's mine. (laughs) By approaching this person with the problem you have, you're now communicating to this person the problem and you're giving them the chance to communicate back to you. A lot of times they have no idea that they've hurt you. Proverbs 15, 1 to 4 says, I remember this, as you Approach your brother or sister. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. So don't go in the moment of anger. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of the fool belches out foolishness. The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue, though, crushes the spirit. Differences are not the end of a relationship. Differences between you and somebody else are not the end of your relationship, but the failure to communicate these differences many times will be. We're not all the same. We're not all the same here this morning. And that's not just a good, that's not just okay. It's not just a tolerable thing, but it's essential that we're not all the same because that would be really boring, right? The differences that we have can make us effective together. We need to learn from each other. So the first is be honest. The second is be a trustworthy friend. In order, uh, in other words, don't gossip. Now again, before walls come up, I'm in the same place as everybody else, okay? But we sure love to gossip as humanity, don't we? Right? Right? I think there's a part of it that's, it's our desire to to be the people that break news or tell people something they've never heard before. Hey, did you hear about such and such? I think it's a, it's a, a combination of that and we really do like when other people fail because it makes us feel okay about ourselves, right? We realize we're not the only ones that fail. It's like these people in a place of power fail Or like uh, Joe Biden, you know, falls off his bike and we're sending the videos as fast as we can to show everybody, right? I'm not the only one that's done that. The Hebrew word translated gossip in the Old Testament is defined as one who reveals secrets. One who goes about as a talebearer or scandal monger. A gossiper is a person who has privileged information about people and then proceeds to reveal that information to those who have no business knowing it. You ever known somebody who you knew that you could just tell them something and then they would tell everybody else, right? You just, okay, just tell that person and then you don't have to worry and everybody else will find out, right? Let's not be those people. Let's look at James 3.3 this morning. It's talking about the power of your tongue, it says, what, uh, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. 
Hmm. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Those are strong words. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless and evil. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises God, our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. How many of you guys want to be fresh water this morning to those around you? Now you might say with this topic of gossip, well, Jardeth, I you don't you don't understand the situation. You don't know what that person did to me, right? You don't know what they did to me to cause this offense. I'm really justified in sharing this because because they deserve it. Or I I just I'm not I'm not gossiping. I just I want people to hear my side of the story, right? People just, I want them to hear my side of the story just so, so they're aware of who that person really is, right? There's all sorts of ways that we justify slander and gossip. But the Bible says that we don't war against flesh and blood. We don't war against our brothers and sisters. Amen? Have you ever had a, where, where it wasn't really that big of an issue, you weren't really that offended, but then you started telling people about it? And then other people were like, oh, you should be offended. And then you got offended? Okay. So let's not be a people that gossip. In Proverbs 11, 11 to 13, it says, Upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper, but the talk of the wicked tears it apart. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. What are we communicating when we're not trustworthy with other secrets? What are we communicating when we trash others for the sake of enlightenment or keeping people in the loop? I just got to tell you, right? We need to be a people who don't make room for gossip or slander. So in this church and in this community, we need to be the kind of people that when somebody comes to you with gossip, when somebody comes to you with a story about somebody, we go, hey, I mean, in in the most respectful way, we go, hey, um, did, did you talk to them first? Right? A lot of times we enable this because we go, ah. I don't. I know this is gossip, but I just really want to hear what you you started. You, you started that sentence. You might as well finish it, right? And because we're curious, instead of just going, you know what? I don't think that is uh, is edifying for that person. I don't think that's building them up. How about we stop and pray for them instead? And these things all sound super Christian, right? They sound super bubble gum, you know. Um, but it's true. Stop and pray for somebody instead of gossiping about them. Reach out to somebody instead of talking behind their back. So the third thing I want to touch on is speak life. Be easy on people, but be tough on ideas, right? Our words have power. God has called us to be a people of restoration and a people of hope. Are we as a people communicating life when we speak, or are we communicating death? Our words can either build people up or they can break them down. We all know those people who, um, when we spend time with them, we leave feeling kind of worn out. We leave feeling kind of discouraged about everything. Maybe there hasn't been any words of life shared at all. You leave kind of feeling negative, drained, depressed. In Proverbs 18.21, it says the tongue can bring life or death. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Also in Proverbs 12, 18, 
It says, some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. What do, what do our words bring when people are around us? Do our words bring life and healing? Or do they cut and bring death? I sure hope my words bring life. On the other side of this, we all know people who we spend time with them and we leave feeling encouraged, right? We leave feeling like God's in control, like we can make that next step, like the calling that God's placed on us. People call those things out of us, right? And they breathe life into those things. I'm not talking this morning about telling people they have talents when they don't, right? That's how people end up on American Idol, right? I see them and I'm like, oh man, their family is not very nice to them. But I'm talking about speaking godly truths to people, right? Speaking into the heart of somebody else and breathing life into them. Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those that hear them. How do people leave feeling when they've spent time with us? How do people leave, what do they leave feeling when when they spend time with us? Do they feel encouraged? Do they feel worn down? What do people feel like when they leave our church, right? When they come in on a Sunday morning, do they leave feeling like built up, encouraged? Do they leave feeling discouraged? Do we just pile more stuff on their back? More rejection, more bitterness? The Bible implores us to live at peace with all men. We're almost done here. That means there's about 30 minutes to go. Just, you know. In Romans 12, 9 to 18, it says, Paul's writing this letter to the Romans, and he's advising them how to live Christian lives. Because they didn't know, right? So Paul's writing these letters, and he says, don't just pretend to love people. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Don't be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. In verse 18, do all things, do all that you can live in peace with everyone. Do all that you can live in peace with everyone. With everyone. Now, the words that come out of us, what we communicate, isn't just important for other people around us, but it's also important that we take stock and and are aware of what we're communicating because the words that we say also expose the condition of our hearts, right? What comes out of you is what's inside of you. Sometimes our words. It can be our very worst enemy. A critical heart will speak disparaging words. A bitter heart stinging words. A self-righteous heart judgmental words. A thankless heart words of complaint. But on the other hand, a loving heart will speak uplifting words. A contented heart words of faith. A humble heart words of acceptance. A joyful heart grateful words. Love, contentment, humility, and joy. These qualities within ourselves will help speak life to others. Right? These things coming out of us will help speak life to others. So I just want to take a moment this morning. If uh, Andrea, if you don't mind coming up for a second. Just going to play some piano. So we can have a moment of reflection. Now, I can't, I'm not going to make it to the, to the second one. Um, if you're feeling a little bit discouraged by this message, if you're feeling a little bit beat up, I hope you don't. 
But if you're feeling a little bit like this is frustrating, like you can't do this on your own, like this is something that in your own willpower you've tried really hard and you failed like me, I want to encourage you that you can't do it on your own, right? To live in harmony with all, <clears throat> with all people. That doesn't come from us, right? That comes from God. And that's the second, the, it's the most important person that we communicate with is God, between us and God. Communication with God directly affects our communication with those around us, right? So I just want to ask you a question this morning. I'm going to get Kara to come up. We're going to move into communion in a second, but I want to ask this question. And I want you to sit with it just for a second. Just to take a moment and take stock of, uh, of what's, what's going on in you. What is your life communicating to those around you, right? So if you were to look at everything, not just your Sunday morning, come in, put your good face on, everything's awesome and, and God is great. But the other six days of the week, what are our lives communicating? Just take a moment. And don't just think about that yourself. Take that to God. Say, God, what is my life communicating to those around me? Is there anything in my life that is communicating what I don't want it to. I just want to take two minutes. Just a moment of reflection and prayer. It's, it's great to talk about this stuff, but if we don't learn how to apply it, we just walk out the door and leave it here, right? So let's take a moment to reflect on that. <clears throat> 